Hello, and welcome to today's show, Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, international leadership expert and trusted advisor. Welcome to Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm so delighted that you joined me today. I have a wonderful show for you. In a previous episode, I shared with you the importance of slowing down and some of my favorite ways to do just that. So you can take good care of yourself when your life gets a little frenetic or when you're feeling frazzled or just plain fried. Or maybe when you are simply feeling overwhelmed. And let's face it, we all get a bit overwhelmed at times. Today, I'm going to focus on some specific ways that you can be intentional about cultivating and creating practices that will support you in integrating rest and renewal as a part of your everyday life. Okay? All right. Now, You can help me as I incorporate the practice of asking you (laughs) to share the wealth with somebody else. After you listen to this episode, I want you to tell somebody, your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, your best friend. I want you to tell someone who can benefit from what I share with you in this very special episode. And I also want you to be sure to come back to this podcast over and over again, when you need someone to remind you to hit the pause button and slow down so that you can take time to take good care of yourself. All right, let's get started. Did you know that rest is the original transformative technology? That's right. Now, that's according to Dr. Matthew Edland. Dr. Edland reminds us that through rest, we rebuild, rewire, and renew ourselves, literally. I love that. And he calls it the original transformative technology. So here's the point. If we want to transform ourselves, if we want to recreate ourselves, right, We must learn to elevate rest in our lives. When we elevate rest and make time for it, we rebuild, rewire, and renew ourselves. Not once, not twice, but over and over and over again. I call this practice of rest sanctuary. Now, as I mentioned in a previous episode, I wrote a book called Sanctuary. You can check it out sometime on Amazon or through your local independent bookseller. In my book, I share many of the same things that I will share with you today. So if you're serious about developing a new habit, a new dance step, right, a new practice, be sure to buy the book so that you can refer to it whenever you need to do so. So how do we make way for sanctuary, especially in our hectic, fast-paced lives that seem to just be getting faster and faster and faster? How do you make room for sanctuary? Well, I'm going to ask the question another way. How can we not make room for sanctuary? I mean, really. We all need to pause for refreshment and renewal. Now, you all know that I'm a musician, right? And without pauses or rests, what we call music would be nothing more than a continuous stream of white noise. And the same thing is true in our lives. Can I just tell you something? (laughs) Without pausing, without rest, the grand symphony of our life becomes nothing more than a continuous stream of meaningless activity. That's right, meaningless activity. But 
when we pause, we actually make way. We make way for sanctuary. This sacred pause provides gracious space for us to pay attention to the magnificent music of our lives. This sacred pause provides food to nourish our souls. Sanctuary calls us to get centered and grounded so we can attune to and tend to the parts of ourselves that are frazzled, out of sync, or, as I said earlier, just plain fried. Now, it's been said that humans are profoundly rhythmic. In fact, it's the main way we communicate through language and through music. So I invite you to notice, just simply notice, the song in your own heart. That song is your unique melody. That's right. That song is uniquely yours. Your melody is all about your why, your reason, your unique reason for being alive. Sanctuary invites you to ask yourself, am I singing my own song, right? Am I singing my own song or am I singing somebody else's song? In other words, am I being true to my unique purpose, my unique reason for being on the planet? I also want you to notice how you connect with others because that's your harmony which is how you relate, connect, engage with family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, plants, animals, and the rest of our planet. Sanctuary invites you to ask some very specific questions here. You might want to write these down. Am I living only for myself? Am I in tune with my spouse, my kids? Am I connecting with my classmates or team members or friends? Am I a good neighbor? When I reach out to others, how might I serve them while also being faithful to myself? Now, I invite you also to notice your pace. That's right, your pace or your tempo. Is it fast or slow or is it just right? Sanctuary invites you to ask yourself, am I going so fast that I lose track of who and what's important to me? In other words, do I stop and smell the roses? (laughs) Do I include time for friends and other loved ones? Or am I going so slow that I miss out on moments, opportunities, and relationships? So your song has other parts to it. I invite you to notice your rhythm or your cadence, right? Your rhythm is all about who and what you value. It's about who and what you put in the center of your life and who and what you put on the sidelines. Sanctuary invites you to ask yourself, who do I include? Who do I include? Who do I exclude? Do I pay attention to who and what has heart and meaning? What do I emphasize? How does this serve me and others? What new rhythms must I learn for this particular season of my life? Great questions, right? So what's my point? Here's what I know. When we are in sync, 
when we're in concert with the music of our lives, our melody, our harmony, our tempo, and rhythm, we attend to the condition and resonance of our soul. I'm going to repeat that again. When we are in sync, when we are in concert with the music of our lives, our melody, our harmony, tempo, and rhythm, we attend to the condition and resonance of our soul. And as we attend to that resonance of our own soul, at the same time, we're also attending to the condition and resonance of the world soul, this wondrous global village we call home. In other words, when we take care of ourselves, we're taking care of our community, our city, our state, our nation, and our world. When we are attuned to the music of our lives, we can reconnect to our highest calling. Now, in the exterior realm of doing, it is very, very easy to just get off track, to lose your groove. It's very easy to get out of alignment and be out of harmony with yourself and with your calling, with your purpose, right? In this realm of doing, there is so much that conspires against you. Here are just a few of them. Competing priorities, distractions, limiting beliefs, self-sufficiency, multitasking, old patterns, other people's agendas for you, (laughs) your own insecurities, critical judgments, and so much more. I know that you could add even more things to this list. Sanctuary beckons you. It summons you to cross the threshold from doing to being. Now, what exactly is a threshold? That's a great question. A threshold is a very special kind of of opening an opening that allows you to walk away from the territory of external demands and step into a realm of inner freedom. Can I just tell you that when you cross that threshold, there's a great gift for you on the other side. In fact, there are five important resources that await you on the other side when you cross that threshold from doing to being. What are those five important resources? Well, let me tell you right now. Intention, commitment, compassion, humility, and joy. When you draw on these special resources and their spiritual resources, I just want to tell you that these resources are blessings, okay? And their blessings are absolutely immeasurable. Each one of these resources is an invitation, an invitation to you to make way for sanctuary. So let's talk a little bit about these spiritual resources, what they invite you to be and do, and the wonderful benefits that will come your way when you accept the invitation. So the first spiritual resource, again, is intention. Intention. Now this is an invitation, and the first invitation, and it's the first one on purpose, because you want to consciously set your intention. This spiritual resource offers the twin gifts of clarity and focus. Clarity and focus. When you set your intention to make a way for sanctuary, this life-affirming action 
will actually ensure a difference in your life today and a different tomorrow. Now, if you're in a place where you have access to a candle, I want you to actually go get that candle. And if you don't, I want you to just imagine that you have a candle in front of you. And I want you to light a candle to remind yourself that setting your intention is a sacred moment. Lighting a candle is a time-honored way to bring light into darkness, to bring light into a broken, frazzled world. In this way, Lighting the candle, you focus your intention on what truly matters. Now, did you know that when you set your intention, it's actually an antidote? That's right. It's an antidote to distraction. So if you want to get rid of distraction, drama, and other disruptions or disturbances in your life, then you must be intentional. You must set your intention. The next spiritual resource is commitment. So let's talk about that. What is commitment? Well, commitment is all about dedication and faithfulness. Commitment is about going all the way, not part of the way, but all the way. The invitation is to commit to your own well-being. Making an intentional commitment to your own well-being is a special gift, a gift from you and for you. This gift draws you in to an oasis of self-love and self-care. Here in this awesome beautiful oasis, you can refresh yourself in the sacred waters of awe, beauty, humor, joy, play, silence, solitude, and wonder. I want you to take the time to write this out. So if you don't already have a notepad or a small sheet of paper, a sticky note, go and get yourself one, okay? And write this down. I commit to my own well-being. Okay? I commit to my own well-being. And I want you to put your note in a place where you will see it throughout the day. Maybe it's your kitchen, your refrigerator. Maybe it's your mirror in your bathroom. Wherever it is that you pass through day after day, and you can look at that several times a day, I want you to see that note that you just wrote to yourself. And I want you to do this for the next 30 days. Why? Because it takes about that long, 28 to 30 days, to form a new habit. Okay? Now, commitment turns vision into volition. All right? The next spiritual resource is compassion. And compassion is all about being aware and caring and kind. It's also about being courageous, about being willing to help others who are suffering. Compassion invites you to begin with yourself, which is a wondrous gift. Why? Because beginning with yourself opens your heart to have compassion and mercy for others. Now I want you to find a few things around your home or your yard or your office that are heart-shaped. I enjoy collecting heart-shaped rocks. Over the years, People who know me know I love to collect hearts, so I've received gifts of hearts shaped from wood, from onyx, soapstone. I also love photos of plants with heart-shaped leaves. I know when I go on my walks, I actually look for plants with heart-shaped leaves as well. Hosta, beech trees, violets, morning glory, anthurium. Love, love those plants, right? 
Now take a picture, either a mental picture or a physical picture, of your favorite heart shape. And keep it as a reminder as your own heart opens to have greater compassion for yourself and for other folks in your life. The Dalai Lama reminds us that love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, he says, humanity cannot survive. So love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. Humility. So what is humility? A lot of us get confused about humility. Humility is not thinking any more or less of yourself than you think of anyone else. That's right. In other words, you value and honor yourself the same as you do other people. Humility invites you to ask yourself a very important question. How can I support my own health and happiness in this moment? Now, one of the many gifts of humility is inspiration. Inspire comes from the Latin word inspirare, which means to breathe into or upon. When we are inspired, we are infused with life from a force outside of ourselves. I'm a person of faith, so I believe that God is that force that breathes into and upon us to infuse us with new life. Now, on your daily or weekly to-do list, I want you to be sure to write your own name. (laughs) Okay? On your daily or weekly to-do list, please be sure to include in that list your own name. And I want you to write the word sanctuary next to your name. And be sure to put your name and sanctuary on the very top of your daily or your weekly to-do list. Okay? The next spiritual resource is joy. Now, joy invites us to recognize the divinity within ourselves. That's right, the divinity within ourselves. Now, sometimes we confuse happiness and joy. Okay? Happiness comes from the outside. Joy comes from within. Happiness is a free-flowing stream. Joy is white water exhilaration. Happiness is often fleeting, right? Here today, poof, gone. Joy is constant. True joy, which is a precious, precious gift, comes from the satisfaction of being content with and faithful to who and whose you are. Let Pierre Teilhard de Chardin's words encourage you. He says, joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. I love that. So, celebrate yourself. (laughs) Sing your favorite song and dance like no one is watching. Now, I'm going to give you a few practices to help you cultivate sanctuary. Okay? The spiritual resources help you make a way for sanctuary And these are the practices to help you cultivate sanctuary. Rumi says, there's a way of breathing. There is a way of breathing 
that's a shame and a suffocation. And there's another way of expiring. A love breath that lets you open infinitely. Practices form us. In other words, practices train us how to be as we move through our days. A good practice is life-giving and life-affirming. Like a love breath, it allows our soul to open wide. Can I just tell you that life is exquisitely better when you include at least one life-giving practice in the regular rhythm of your daily and weekly routines. Your practice can be as simple as saying thank you to welcome each new day. Or it can be something more, maybe five minutes each day to jot down who and what you're grateful for. Five minutes of of being still, absolutely still, on purpose. And then next week, bump it up to 10 minutes. Here's what matters most. Be intentional and choose a practice that delights and refreshes you. Because if it's a chore, and if you dread doing it, guess what? (laughs) It won't be a practice. It won't be a life-giving practice, right? So be intentional and choose a practice that both delights you, makes you laugh, makes your face just light up, and a practice that refreshes you. Now, when you do this, when you make that choice, you will find it much, much easier to commit to your practice on a regular basis. In fact, I like to say when you practice your practice regularly (laughs) and with delight, it can actually make your interior life more bountiful and satisfying. And as that bounty and satisfaction renews and invigorates your inner life, it will begin to seep into your outer life. So let's talk a little bit more about these practices. Sanctuary practices. Now, sanctuary speaks the language of the soul. Now, some of you may not know about what that means. So I'm going to just share a little bit about the language of the soul. The soul's language includes gratitude, beauty, and silence, right? Now, there are numerous practices from many contexts around the world that cultivate sanctuary. The key practices that I want to share with you are gratitude, beauty, silence, those languages of the soul, right? Gratitude, beauty, silence, music, solitude, being with nature, prayer, slowing, and reflection. Now, I've used these practices with people of all ages in diverse contexts, aerospace, (laughs) business, civic, Community, education, faith based, finance, healthcare, human services, tech, right? IT, law, leadership development, the military, philanthropy, political science, social justice, and on and on. I wish I had time to delve into all the places and all the practices right here, but I don't. So, if you want to learn more, again, please check out my book which is called Sanctuary. Here's what I want you to do. As you learn about the different practices that I'll share with you today, I want you to choose just one, just one that suits you. And then try it out for a while, right? And then when you get used to it and you go, oh yeah, I really like this one. This is really a good fit for me. Then I want you to add another practice, okay? All right, here we go. Gratitude. Now, gratitude is the soul's way of having fun, (laughs) right? It's the soul's way of rejoicing. 
Gratitude is a time-honored way to express our joy for the amazing, abundant blessings in our lives. Expressing gratitude is also a way to pause, just to pause and remember that each day is a precious gift. When you express gratitude, share your joy, and celebrate your blessings, you open your heart and open the door to new possibilities and greater abundance. Now, you can cultivate the practice of gratitude by being present to and grateful for the abundant grace, mercies, protections, and miracles in your life. Because of these bountiful blessings, you are here. You are here, you're alive, you're vibrant, and you are astonishing. So give thanks daily. Give thanks continually. I want you to carry this practice with you wherever you go, the practice of gratitude. M.J. Ryan helps us remember She says, consciously cultivating thankfulness is a journey of the soul, one that begins when we look around us and see the positive effects that gratitude creates. So gratitude is more than just writing down your blessings or writing out thank you notes or saying thank you, right? Gratitude can actually become a way of being through practice Right? That 30 days of practice, trying it on, and 30 days, right? You're repeating, you're repeating, you're repeating, you're entraining yourself. And you can actually transition from doing gratitude into becoming and being gratitude. Another practice is beauty. Now, beauty is food for our soul. Thomas More reminds us that what food is to the body, arresting, complex, and pleasing images are to the soul. And so are arresting, complex, and pleasing places, sounds, and experiences. That's why it takes our breath away when we witness an exquisite persimmon sunset, right? It takes our breath away when we hear beautiful soul-stirring music like a jazz suite by John Coltrane, when we experience the awesome wonder of a solitary shooting star against a black expanse of sky. We embrace our full humanity and divinity when we are aware of and in contact with that which is beautiful. Remember, remember that beauty is everywhere. Cultivate the practice of beauty by being aware of the astonishing beauty all around you. Here are a few examples the smile of a child, wind whispering in the trees, first flowers that push through the warming earth after winter's long chill, yellow crocus, grape hyacinth, paper white narcissus, a few more examples, the satisfying shape of a hand-thrown vase, the aroma of just baked bread, the amazing artistry of corn road hair. Acknowledge the beauty in your life, not just once in a while, but every single day. And as you take in beauty, your soul will become more beautiful. Our sisters and brothers 
from the Navajo Nation encourage us to walk in beauty so that we might carry beauty with us and imbue beauty at all times. Let the words of this beautiful Navajo prayer inspire you. Let it breathe into you. Happily may I walk. May it be beautiful before me. May it be beautiful behind me. May it be beautiful below me. May it be beautiful above me. May it be beautiful all around me. In beauty, it is finished. I agree with Joan Chittister when she says, it is the beauty within us that makes it possible for us to recognize the beauty around us. And now the practice of silence. Silence is that gracious space where there is no sound, no activity, or words. I'm going to repeat that. Silence is that gracious space where there is no sound, no activity, or words. We often think of silence as just having no sound. But that's not it. No sound, no activity, no words. In our noise-polluted culture, silence is not just a luxury, it is a necessity. In silence, we actually hear what is essential. In silence, we can listen for and attend to the deep desires of our own heart. As poet Rainer Maria Rilke reminds us, our task is to listen to the news that is always arriving out of silence. In silence, we can develop an intimacy with ourselves that is otherwise impossible. And I love that word intimacy. If you think about it, it kind of sounds like into me see. So in silence, we can develop an into me see, an intimacy with ourselves that is otherwise impossible. In silence, we rest and renew ourselves emotionally, intellectually, physically, and spiritually. Now you can cultivate the practice of silence by turning off your cell phone by turning off your iPad, by turning off your computer, your radio, your TV, your video games. (laughs) And then you can appreciate the silence. I want you to find a time when you will not be interrupted or distracted, and then find a place, real or imaginary, to practice silence daily. Begin with five minutes. Next week, try 10 minutes. The following week, try 15 minutes, then 30. Then try to practice silence for 60 minutes each day. Now, for some of you, this might be a little hard, right? So give yourself some grace. Start with five, then 10, then 15, then 30, and then try 60 minutes each day. In this spacious silence, Mother Teresa instructs us, you can hear God everywhere, in the closing of the door, in the person who needs you, in the birds that sing, in the flowers, in the animals. How about music? 
music as a practice. Now, throughout the ages, the art of music has held a sacred place in our lives. However, in our contemporary culture, music's higher purposes have been muted or forgotten altogether. Once intended to illuminate, uplift, and assist in humanity's spiritual evolution, we now use music as a mere prop for marketing or as mundane entertainment. Now, that's not wholesale, but oftentimes that's how music is used in our culture. But you know what? Music is so much more. Beyond being a sacred treasure, music is love and sorrow, imagination and wonder made audible. When we create music or listen to it and honor it for the precious gift it provides, our lives are vastly enriched, vastly improved. You can cultivate the practice of creating or listening to music by humming a melody you already know. Or, hey, create your own song. You can also listen to uplifting or soothing music. And I want you to try listening to music without words. Okay? Without the words. Just instrumental music. So you aren't distracted by the message, the words of the lyrics. Bring instrumental music into your life daily or simply hum, hum, hum the song in your own heart. I agree with Aldous Huxley, who says, after silence, that which comes nearest to expressing the inexpressible is music. Now the practice of solitude. Solitude is uninterrupted time for you to be alone. Uninterrupted, undistracted, undisturbed. Solitude means unplugging from your electronics, your computers, your tablets, your cell phones. It means getting off the grid, right? And away from it all. Solitude provides us with the oxygen required for deep rest, renewal, and restoration. In solitude, your soul just opens wide, and you can listen deeply. You can reconnect with who you are when you are not overly identified with the many roles you play at work, at home, in your family, in your community, right? Now, I want you to cultivate the practice of solitude by making time to be alone. Alone, (laughs) right? And I want you to practice being alone at least once a week. Set aside at least one hour on the same day each week and make a date with yourself. Put it on your calendar. And then I want you to expand your weekly rhythm Okay, your weekly rhythm of making a date with yourself to include a half day or day long solo retreat once a month. It's been said that in solitude we are silent so that we may hear focused so that we may craft substantial things. Indeed. Solitude is the furnace of transformation. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are many, many practices to cultivate sanctuary. Today, we've talked about gratitude, beauty, silence, music, and solitude. If you want to learn more about these practices, and then some, be sure to check out my book. I'm going to give you the full title now. It's called Sanctuary, and the subtitle is Restoring the Rhythm of Rest and Renewal. You can go directly to Amazon to buy my beautiful book. 
And I have to tell you something. You will want to buy a copy for yourself and for your loved ones. I made it small enough that you can fit it easily in your day pack, your briefcase, or your purse, so you can take it with you wherever you go. All right. I hope my words have inspired you today. And as you've heard me say before, inspired comes from the Latin word inspirare. I love that word. Say it with me. It's inspirare, which means to breathe into or to breathe upon. So let this episode breathe into you and inspire you to renewed energy, a renewed outlook, and renewed life so that you are revived and restored. Now, I want you to be sure to share the wealth with somebody. Be sure to share your blessings at somebody else's table. That's how you do it. That's how you make your life count. You can be the change, the transformation that you seek. Just remember this, how you live is how you lead. How you live is how you do everything. You have the power to make our world a world that works for all, a world of blessing and honor and dignity. Now, I want you to be sure to listen to this episode again and again. And hey, again, be sure to tell somebody. You can find me right here on iTunes, Audible, Alexa, SoundCloud, iHeart, TuneIn, Spreaker.com, Talk Network Radio, and so many other places. Now, if you happen to miss any part of this week's show or last week's, you can simply download the recording and listen to it at your convenience. You can even listen to it on the go. Check us out at www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. That's talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. And you can go there and you can actually follow me there. Okay, so that you can get notices of my episodes on a regular basis. You can learn more about my work and Legacy Living Make Your Life Count by visiting the Gloria Burgess website. And as I've mentioned before, if you love to be inspired, you can actually subscribe to my inspirations right on my website. Just scroll down a little bit, look on the right sidebar until you see the place to add your email address to subscribe to my weekly inspirations. It's that simple. Each week, you get a lovely photograph and a short quotation that inspires you. So again, to learn more about me and my work, just browse a bit on my website, or you can visit me on LinkedIn or on Facebook. At Facebook, you can find me at facebook.com forward slash DR for doctor, DR Gloria Burgess, PhD. Okay? All right. Before I close today, I want to thank each of you for tuning in to today's episode, for allowing me to share a bit about my journey with what Legacy Living is all about. Not just living and learning, but living and learning and serving so that you make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. It's about being on purpose every single day. 365 24-7. Legacy living is a powerful way to make your life count. Once again, thank you for joining me for today's show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, and this is Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. Please join me again next time right here on Talk Network Radio for another show of Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. Don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what Legacy Living is all about. 
Have a fantastic day. And remember, make the days in your life count. God bless you. That's our show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess. I hope you'll join me again next time. Until then, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what legacy living is all about. Here's to you. Have a fantastic day and be sure to make it a yes kind of day. Remember to celebrate the music of your life. Make the days in your life.